Hello everybody and welcome to another video tutorial. Um, if you're just getting started with Blender, this is a, probably a good one to, to do. We're going to make the obligatory wooden crate, something that everybody needs to do, especially if you're doing video games or something. So I'm just going to delete the light and the camera and we're actually going to stick with the cube. But I'm going to turn on my move tool, press 1 to look from front orthographic view, hold control and just pull it up. All right, so here we go. So it's going to be really straightforward. I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode and two for edge selection. I'm going to select this edge and I'm going to bring my 3D cursor to it by pressing shift S, cursor to selected, and go back into object mode by pressing tab. So my 3D cursor is there and the next object they bring in will come in right there. I'm going to press seven and look down from the top and press shift A, mesh cube to bring in another one. Go into edit mode and S to scale. And I'm going to scale it down, something like that. I'm going to move it in and try to get it. You can do this accurately if you want. I just want a little bit projecting over the sides, and I want it to be pretty much equal. That looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to scale this in the Z. And I'm just, I just press S, Z, and I'm pulling out. And I want to go just a little bit above the top and the bottom equally. And that's probably good enough right there. Okay, so back into object mode. Select the cube, go into edit mode, and press shift S, cursor to select it, to bring it right in the middle of that. We're going to mirror this around, but you see my move gizmo is over here. I'm going to set it to the 3D cursor by going object, set origin, to the 3D cursor. And now I'm all set to mirror. Come over to the modifier tab. Yours will look a little bit different if you're using a newer version of Blender, but what you need to find is the mirror modifier. And just do that, and that, X and Y we have those in place okay and I think I could probably go ahead and apply that mirror all right I'm gonna look from the front again I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm gonna select one of these control L to select everything linked to it and I'm going to duplicate it by pressing shift D and left clicking and then I'm going to rotate Y R Y 90 uh, this is now still attached to this so I'm gonna break it out so I'm gonna press P separate by selection Go back to front view and press G. Hang on. There, select that, press G to move it up. And what I want to do is I'm going to turn on snap to edge. And I'm going to bring that in just there for the moment. And I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to scale it in the X until it's a little smaller. And then I'm going to turn it. Go back into uh, or deselect, press 3 for face selection and select that face and drag it and hold control and it'll snap to that face. Take that or actually that edge. Pull it, hover over the edge and snap. All right, I'm going to take the whole thing now and move it up and snap to there. So I'm holding control as it snaps to those positions. And that's good. Now my 3D cursor is still right there, right? So I should be able to mirror this. I'm going to mirror it in the Y. So I've got one on both sides. And I'm going to take that, look down from the top, go into edit mode. Actually, no, I think I will apply that mirror. Go into edit mode, shift D, rotate 90. And they should all be pretty good. Okay, so I have all of that. Now I'm going to look from the front and I'm going to shift D to duplicate. I'm going to pull it down and snap to the bottom like that. And that is essentially what we need, but we're going to, I'm going to join all of this control J. I may not join it to the main cube inside yet. And I'm going to put a bevel on this. So just search for bevel. I'm going to bring this up to two and I'll try 0 0.01. That'll push them apart a little bit and sort of look like pieces of wood that are attaching. Uh, I don't need to put a bevel on this inner one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a material for this. You don't have to apply the bevel. I'm going to click down here, Material Properties, click New, double click here. Let's call this wood. So all of this is going to be wood and I also want this to be wood. So select that and just choose the wood. Let's come over to the shading tab now and you can see that we are in material preview here the second one and it all looks white but we have the material wood selected so click on the principled 
PSDF. Yours will look a little bit different if you're using a more recent version of Blender, but it's all the same kind of thing, really. And if you have the Node Wrangler enabled, which is highly recommended, and to do that, you just come to Edit Preferences. In the add-ons, just search for Node. All right, and put a check mark there so that you've got it active. That will allow you to go Control-T. All right, press Control-T, and then G to drag these up. I'm actually going to pull them out of the way because we'll do something else here in a minute. That will give you the texture coordinate, the mapping node, and an image texture. And this is the one we're going to use to load a wood texture. Now, there's lots of wood textures um, on the internet. Uh, this just happens to be one that I found. You can find anything. Uh, try uh, Ambient CG or Textures.com. I just su suggest you get the one that's got the planks. All right. So I'm just going to load this. If I can find this same one again, I will show you where it is. So it's on everything, but it looks terrible. And that's because we need to do some UV unwrapping. So come over to the UV editing window and you'll see, you can see your wood texture in there. And let's roll your mouse wheel until you can get back there and turn on the material preview. All right. So for this one here, Blender already sort of unwraps it and that may or may not work for you. I'm going to scale this out. And I don't like the orientation of these ones, so I'm going to rotate 90 and then just decide how many planks you want you know, on the inside, you know, something like that. And we're already starting to get something. Okay, so I'm going to leave that for the time being. However, I do want to go back to shading. And I want to drag the roughness up so that it's not so shiny. So I'm going to bring it to almost seven and a half. And there, here we are in the in the uh, layout. Uh, I'm just going to switch to a different different HDRI. Okay, I'll I'll leave it there. But anyways, back to UV editing, and we've got that going. Okay, that's fine. Now for this stuff. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, select it all, and press U, Smart UV Project. I don't even think I need to worry about island margins. I'm just going to do that. And this is, this is what we get here. Now, I'm going to go through one at a time. I'm going to press 3 for face selection, and I'll select maybe there. You'll see I've got this thing as if it's like part of the planks. And the reason why is if I look at this piece, it's overlapping this. So just press, with it selected, press G. And drag it somewhere else and then look at it. it looks fine so i really have to go through all of these and it won't take too long just do this put them wherever you want so there's that one i'm going to do all these top ones here so let's check that one out looks like it's overlapping a bit so do that grab this one there i haven't really been worrying about the one on the side or underneath because it's not very visible so just make make your way around, select the face, and just move it wherever you want as long as it's in between. Okay, so that, that, I think maybe all those look okay. All right, so now I'm just going to come down to the bottom level. That one's overlapping. And that one, let's so grab this one, it's overlapping, just put it into there. And that one's overlapping, put it there. That one. And this one you can see, so we've got a dark area and a light area. If you look really carefully, just move that out of the way. Look really carefully over here. This kind of got a split, so just decide if you like that or not. And just position it accordingly. So I think I've done all the bottom ones, so I'm, let's just come over to this one. Maybe I'll move it in there. That one's okay, although it's in... There we go. Okay, this one's got that thing there. And maybe over here. Okay, yeah, overlapping. Same here. And that one. Yeah, that's, that one's a bit weird there. Maybe that's okay. Okay, we got those ones. Let's do the top ones now. Just slide that somewhere else. There, just anywhere really that you think looks good. 
and just in case you see the bottom so I'm just doing this and I'm just pressing G and moving it it's okay I think we've pretty much done it let's go back to layout and have a look at it okay so we still have our bevel on there I could try it with 0 0.02 eh, just to see it I don't know kind of like it like that come over here you notice I had moved these out of the way we're going to use this image to give some bump to our wood so I'm going to add converter color ramp and just drop that there grab these and G to move them I'm going to take the color into the fac and I can pretty much leave the color ramp alone it's just converting color into black and white which is what the bump needs to work uh, or to work well vector bump drag the color into the height and I'm gonna set this at about 0.15 and drag the normal into the normal and that gives us a little bit of bump if I change that to 0.2 Let's just go over here. It gives a little bit more bumpiness to it. So it's up to you what you want. I'm going to go back to 0.15. And there's nothing else I really need to do. Uh, if you want, you can go Shift A, color, something like hue saturation. And you can put this at 1.5. You, know, you can you know, change the color you know, to some extent if you want to do that. And in my version, uh, an older version, it's got the ambient occlusion here. And if I turn that on and change maybe the distance to one and this to something like two, that would be quite pronounced, but it gives you those shadows that you can see it better with. And that's basically it. There's our, there's our wooden crate. All right, and that's all we need to do. And if you don't want to render it, you can just, you know, close those off. And set this up and just take a take a screenshot of that and post process it in GIMP or whatever and uh, it still looks just fine so you know you get practice modeling and texturing very easy to texture and then try different woods as well just once again uh, we needed the wood with the uh, you know with the panels and then you make the the UVs of this stuff small enough so that it can fit in between and move them so that it's not overlapping a line and uh, and there you go. So one texture can give you all of that, quite a lot of variation. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. Hope that's uh, helpful to you. See you next time.